It is Australia Day 2013. This conversation with Guy Warren is taking place in his studio in McKinsey Street in the inner western suburb in Sydney of Leica. You're probably best known for your paintings of highly abstracted figures immersed in highly abstracted and comparatively untamed landscapes. What drew you to that subject? I hesitate to tell this, tell this story because I get shot down occasionally. What happened? It, happened? it all came from one particular moment on the island of Bougainville in the, during the war. Uh, whenever I had a spare time, I'd draw the local people. And I was drawing this big, dark fellow. And I used to pay them with cigarettes or tobacco or whatever. A very, um, you know, I'm not sure if you would do that now. But anyway, and I had nothing to pay this big bloke with one day. So I offered him a tin of talcum powder. And why did we have talcum powder? Um, because the Comforts Fund had sent it up because it thought, they thought it might help with skin disease. Well, nobody ever used it, probably because it looked a bit sissy. Uh, so I had a tin of talcum powder in the, in the tent. So I gave this big black guy a tin of talcum powder, and he immediately emptied it into his hand and made these wonderful big white marks all over his body. And I thought, God, that looks fantastic. It really was the first thing he did. And then I thought, of course he would do that, because the first thing they do is to decorate themselves. If you gave them anything at all, they'd shove it in their hair. They'd put it on their body. They had tribal markings, obviously, but they, th they had no hesitation in decorating their body. Now, this didn't mean much more than that to me at the time. But after I finished tech and went to London with my wife, ten years later, in the early 50s, I was painting in London, and I didn't know what the hell to paint. I had a lot of skill. I could paint a good landscape. I could paint a nude. I could paint a still life. I didn't know what the hell I wanted to paint. Um, I didn't want to paint London. I didn't want to paint the English landscape. It was very beautiful, but it wasn't my landscape. And in desperation, without thinking about it, I started to paint my memories of New Guinea. And then I started painting people who were decorated. And exactly at that point, uh, we had a little black and white television set, and I saw a documentary made by some bloke who'd been in New Guinea, in Mount Hagen, uh, where there was a big dance festival. And I think he'd made the first documentary, black and white documentary of the dance festival in Mount Hagen. And that's where dancers from all over the Pacific, particularly in New Guinea, come with wonderful decorations, headdresses, body decorations, feathers. It's absolutely fantastic stuff. And uh, I looked at this documentary and I thought, my God, you know, I'm only going on my memories. Wouldn't it be fun if I had something like that that I could draw from and refresh my memory, refresh my ideas? So I wrote to the BBC and said something silly like, I'm a young Australian painter in London and uh, I wonder if I could buy some of your stills because you must have had a still photographer there as well as a filmmaker. And I got a phone call about a week or ten days later from some bloke who said he thought he could help me. And it turned out he'd made the film and he had a lot of photographs. And he introduced himself on the phone and he said his name was David Attenborough. And would I like to come round and have a drink with him? So Joy and I went round to David's place and had a drink with him, met him and his wife. And he lent me a lot of photographs. Uh, he wouldn't sell them to me and I took them back. And working with them and my memories, I did a a show in London, and I had a show in London, and before I had the show, I invited him and his wife to come round to our flat to have a look at the show, and I offered him one of the paintings, and which he, I gave him his photographs back, he took a little painting, um, and I have been in touch once or twice since, but I was fascinated very recently, about a year ago, to see him being interviewed by the BBC, by the ABC, uh, it was an ABC interview by that fellow who interviews for the ABC occasionally. What the hell's his name? 